Hello and welcome to the first episode of the C Unraveled series. In this series, you will be learning the C programming language. So let's begin with a little overview over the C language. C language is of great use in modern times. The biggest use I have heard of C language is in creating Adobe Photoshop, which is a wide renowned and widely known editing software. Also multiple other software such as Premiere Pro, Blender are also made up in C and there are also multiple games such as Assassin's Creed, Fallout and even Fortnite which is a really famous game in modern times. So let's begin with the C language in the code editor. I am using VS code but you can use any code editor. So we will begin with name, creating a file. I would name the file hello.c as this is a C language so we need to write dot C there. So let's close the sidebar. So in C language we have to begin our code from importing files which like in Python we can straight ahead write import but in C we have to write hash include. This is the word for import here. And then we have to import header files. So the mostly used, no, I won't say mostly used, the mainly used one is stdio.h. That, that .h represents that it is the header file. And the stdio stands for standard input and output. So this is the first step we have to do in each and every C code. We have other options such as IO stream, etc. But those would be for the later videos. This is the basic import we always require. So this in second line comes int main and curly braces. In here main is the function name. I would later on elaborate on what functions are and int is the data type which stands for numbers and it is also good practice to write return zero in the main function because return zero is sim not really used when working with smaller programs such as hello world etc but as the complexity increases in a program then such commands such as the return zero becomes valuable. So it is better to have a habit of using it in advance. Also to print a statement, we have to write printf in C. Also remember that in C programming language, we need to use semicolons. Semicolon works as the only terminator in our line code, which is obviously necessary for a code to run properly. As it is the first program I am creating in this series, so I, it would obviously be Hello World. The program from where each and every programmer's journey begins. So let's save it. And as I am working in VS Code, so I have to run the program using commands. If in case you are also using VS Code, then you can simply learn these simple ways. Although you'll have to download GCC from MingW etc. But I'm just simply telling you if in case you have access to a device that already has C. So simply write GCC hello dot C. So we are simply telling GCC to check this file which is hello dot C. And then I can show you in the sidebar Okay, just took their command. As you can see here is now another file that appeared which is a.exe. It is simply the executable file. As when the C programs need to con get converted into an executable file to run as a program or they won't run. That is why we told GCC that we need to run hello.c. So we have to write dot slash a dot exe and run. As you can see, hello world is written here. 
so we have got our output now this was that how we can get a simple our in output from the program now i'll tell you how to get an input so we would declare a variable char simply means character and it can only hold a single value from single value i mean that it can only hold one alphabet such as a or b or c we can't put an entire word for that we have string which is a different concept which i would be talking about later on so char i would name it a so this is the simple way to declare a variable also i would tell you how we can print straight from the variable that if we have given the value to a variable so i'll write okay so you can write any value here such as i would write first it isn't necessary to give names such as a b or c so i have simply written a and if here i write also whenever using a variable to print we need to do some things like we have to write here percent c whenever we are using char let me write in the notes so that i can show you easily that whenever using char char requires let me change the theme yes now it's better so char requires percent c to be written whenever using int we require percent d whenever using float like these are the mostly used data types i would be making a separate video on these data types but for now on you can just remember three of these we have to write percent f float is simply integers with decimal values because int needs int has a range of minus infinity to infinity but float also includes the decimal numbers which are not a part of integers so if we want to print the value of first we need to write this comma and then first and when we save it okay i forgot to do one thing it will also come in inverted commas so when we save it we have to again do gcc hello dot c it seems to be wrong okay okay let me do it with int first so int and we'll write the value 10 and we'll change it to d so let's save it and now when we write gcc hello dot c then we write dot slash a dot exe as you can see it print 10 so this is a simple way we can use these variables and also i would show you how to do it with a scan scan f is simply the in input variant where we we can make the user input some value that can be printed or can be stored inside so i would just simply write here we need to write percent d because we are using an integer and we have to use ampersand which is widely known as and and then we have to write the variable name ampersand simply represents that we have to save that value at the address of whatever variable name we have given 
so I have saved it also to make it a little simple I would write print f enter the value and semicolon let's save it and now let's gcc hello.c and as you can see there is written enter the value suppose we gave the value 11 it has printed the value 11 there so that I would also write here so this is to provide input and this is to provide output and these are the statements that are mostly used in each and every program because we some always need to check that is the input that we give is correct or is there some problem like we were facing some problems here in the care so that is a simpler way to check now another thing that is of I won't say a little it is one of the most important things in each and every programming language I would even create a separate file for it and that is control flow I would only write control flow dot c control flow statements are simply the loops and the conditional statements loops are simply used whenever we need to re repeat a task such as I, I would show you in a minute so stand int main and then return 0 so the loops I talked about are of two types I would make a multi-line comment also forgot to tell you how we make comments in C for a single line comment we can simply use two slashes that's enough for a single line comment and for a multi line comment we have to put slash star so the loops are of two types the first type is like not two so it is of three types one is called for one is while loop and another is do while loop so I would show you an example of each of them so I'll write for first of all I would show you it with complete syntax so as you can see here we need to first give a variable to them so I would name a variable int a in the first one I won't give a like they are already using i i and j are the most used variables in loops so as you can see that we have to first put i equal to 0 you can put 1 and any value there is no such compulsion that it has to be 0 but we prefer to keep it at zero because we need to start the loop since the beginning and now we need to give it a value that till what value we wanted to run so I would give it a value of 11 and this is what we call the increment symbol increment simply means that it will do plus one as this is a loop so it will keep doing plus one until the value reaches 11 to show how it works I'll do printf and I'll write a space okay now let's save it now let's go to the terminal and write 
gcc and the name we give control slow dot c and now again the statement would be same as you can see there are 10 a's written there now i can make you count there is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 because we gave the value 11 here we can also like currently they all all the a's appeared in the single line but we have a system with which we can simply make it to appear in next line like i would now write hello and all we have to do is put a backslash and write n backslash n means that it will appear in the next line from now on so if we now put gcc control flow and then this as you can see now there are a number of hellos written now i will show how to work with the while loop this was the for loop now i will use while loop here we have to give it a condition again just like our let me correct the indentation So now in while loop, we again have to write the condition just there. So I would write I again equal to 11 and then curly braces. Now as we gave here the value I equal to 0, we haven't given any value to I. So we need to give that value here in the de declaration of that variable. Simply till it was int i. It was called declaration. Like if I go to the next line and I write i equal to 0 semicolon. Then this will be called initialization. Initialization is simply giving a value to a variable. But it's mostly preferred to just simply do it in the declaration. As you can do it for a single variable. But whenever using multiple variables it may get complex. So at that time it is preferred to do a separate initialization. As we have given the value i equal to 0 there. So and we have also given the range that it should only work till i reaches the value of 11. So now I'll write i plus plus. Which is simply the increment operator we were using in the for loop also. Now we will write printf and now I'll write something different such as now I'll write word and if we save it and again go to that gcc and then this when will it work? Let's change the variable. Okay, the, the value already went to 11. That is why there was such a problem. Let me do it with a, another variable. So here it is. J. J. And let's save it. And now we'll do it again. Now as you can see, here is the hello written and here is the word. And the third one is do while. This is a little bit different. 
like here we have to first tell that what we wanted to do so i'll declare a third variable now so int k equal to 0 and now we have to tell it what to do so printf again the next line and now i'll simply put an exclamation mark with the space and now here we'll write while and here will be the condition which is k less than 11 and semicolon let's save it i think i did some mistake Okay, I forgot to put a semicolon. That is why I always say you to take care of the semicolons. Okay, so as you can see now, there seems to be a bug. Something went wrong there, but this is how it works. So now I'll just comment it all out. I would simply like copy and paste it up there. So cut, paste. Again, cut, paste, and again, cut and paste. Okay, I'm, I by mistake even put the return there. So we will put star and again a slash. Now it's time for the conditional statements. And for the conditional statements, I would tell you that there are the main used conditional statement is if else statement it further comprises of multiple statements like there is one if and one else statement and you can put any number of if if else or else if statement in between them i will show you the program and the other type is switch switch is mostly used whenever we are getting an input from a user So I'll begin with if else. The difference between loops and conditional statements is that loop will continue to repeat that same program until and unless that value is reached, such as we gave the value 11 in all of these loops. So the, they will keep running until and unless the value of that variable reaches 11. But in conditional statements, it will stop, like it would not repeat itself. It will just once check that what condition is followed. Although if we want to change the output we get, I am running out of words. Just let me rephrase it. If we want to get an output as per the input given but that in a repetitive manner 
then we can use these conditional statements inside of loops. So just simply rerun that whole program and until we check that each and every output we wanted is getting printed by the computer. So I'll first show you such as I'll again create a variable which I'll name A. So I'll give it a value of 10. Okay, but here I'll write I is greater than 10. Which means if I not greater than I had to say lesser than it simply says that if value of I wrote I by mistake it simply means that if the value of A is less than 10 then we have to print less now we will write the else if else always comes together like they are simply like as we also say in the statements that if this thing happens like this then I will respond in this way else this would be my response like I would give you a small example like if a police goes to arrest someone then there is also an if else statement if the criminal surrenders the police will arrest him if else encounter that was I know that is not a good example at all but I think it would have made it clear so I'll write printf and I would write error so let's save it and again GCC control low dot c dot slash and as you can see the value was not equal I mean I meant that the value was equal to 10 and not less than 10 so it reacted in this way and gave the answer error now if we save it like this like I have put a less than or equal to symbol now it will give us the answer less although that shouldn't be the answer as you can see now it is giving us the answer less and even if we change the symbol to greater than then it would be the same so I would now give I'll now use the if else if or if else statement. So else if A is greater than 10 then print greater. Okay and if it is not in that way then I'll write here equal now here the answer will be equal and not less or greater and I'll show you as you can see there is written equal because it satisfied none of these statements now I'll show you how the switch statement works so I'll first create a variable int and I would write ex you can write any name there is no such problem now I'll use the scanf write percent %d ampersand ex and here semicolon I will write printf because 
I will prefer to type a statement there. I also begin it with the next line so that it prints in the next line and not in the same line. Like it would not look good writing equal give the value. So provide the value. Okay, so if we have done this, now further, I read switch, and now we'll tell what the name of the variable is. And now we'll write, first of all, case one colon. Colon is simply the two dots, which we were also using in the CSS. And now here we'll write printf one. Now we have to do another thing which is break statement. Break simply means that break the flow of data from there. And now we can simply copy paste it three times. It's a wish that how many times we want to do it. I'll just do two and two. This isn't a real example that how a switch is used. I'm currently not with an idea and the idea I have, which is the calculator. I have thought of making it in a separate video. So there would be a video where I would be using switch statement and would be creating a calculator in C itself. So three. Also, like we were using else in the if else statement, the same way we have to use a statement in switch also, which is known as default. Default is simply that if we are given such value that isn't compatible with any of these cases, then this is going to happen. So printf. And I would write none. Let's save it and let's run it. Okay, what is the problem? Passing argument one of printf. Okay, let's do one thing. There is a slight change. Percent D, comma, ex. And this would be same for all. So, copy D. paste and again paste and let's save it and let's try now yes now it is working now it is asking her to provide some value suppose we gave the value one it print one let's run it again now if we give a value two it will give two okay and if now I'll give a value out of the range such as six. Now it is giving us value six. If we want to like differentiate it a little bit, so we can write, let's copy it, paste. In range. And let's put uh, N. So I'm putting this in three of the cases, but it will not be a part of the default one. So we can simply differentiate that is the value in the range or not. 
so i'll just go with gcc and again go with this and i give the value 1 it is giving in range now if i give a value 7 it is not writing in range so we are simply getting that information that it is not one of the cases but as you have put the value print f percent d comma ex so it is just printing the value although it isn't even in the range so that's enough for today like the video if you want another episode most probably i would be posting the next episode on the next sunday so wait for it if you want to learn further also the calculator video would be coming soon maybe i uploaded even before sunday because i have taught what whatever is required in that video i think you should try it once yourself and tell me in the comments that how the progress is going till then bye